Hello everyone. I would like to talk to you tonight about ancient Egypt, electricity, and some moon mysteries that have been on my mind, and I've been thinking about some things. First, tonight, well, we're going to take a little dive into the... Did the ancient Egyptians have electricity? To me, a very interesting and intriguing question. There seem to be plenty of clues. I don't know, what do you think about this? It seems to me for quite a long time now we've been surmising and hypothesizing about the ancient Egyptians having electric power. I remember talking about the Jeb Pillar in previous videos, reminding me of some kind of an electrode. It sure does look electric. So let's start off with what we know and do our best to analyze it with the information that we have. It is known the electric catfish of the Nile was known by the ancient Egyptians, which certainly could have given them the concept of electric charge. And it's been promulgated that the Great Pyramid was an electric powerhouse of some kind. And pretty much most of us should already know or have heard about the Baghdad Battery, an ancient electric cell battery found near modern-day Baghdad, Iraq, by a German archaeologist in 1936. One of the most interesting and highly debated artifacts of the Baghdad Museum in Iraq it is a clay pottery. It stands about five to six inches high and capulates a copper cylinder suspended in the center of this cylinder, but not touching it is an iron rod to uh, be filled with vinegar or wine and this would make a cell more than a battery and if you put all of them together then you get battery. The term battery mo mostly means a battery of cells like an artillery battery. According to Brian Forrester the ancient Egyptians indeed knew about electricity and utilized it to the maximum benefit, which wouldn't surprise me a bit. The Jeb pillar is forming the same function as a Tesla, Tesla tower or coil. You can touch it, but here, the, the giants here are the ancient commissions. They're being picked as giants. Now, we, we say to them, oh, is it symbolic or is it actual? Why does it have to be either or? Why can it not be both? They could have been giants, but giants of mind. Uh -huh. Okay, it's both. This shows the knowledge of electricity that was there. Why, if it's symbolic, do you have a wire being plugged into a box? I thought that was something. Of course, yeah. and this is the backbone of Osiris. Oh. The, the Jed pillar, Jed, Jed pillar. Where they come to the name, uh, used in Arabic today in, in Egypt, Jeddah means grandpa, papa. Well, you know, I remember uh, Neil Thompson said that he thinks the, the ancients in Egypt worshipped the great electricity. And there's all kinds of clues that they were indeed using electricity from the ceilings of the Serapium and the Great Pyramids. There are no scorch marks from, from having torches. They had to have some kind of an electric power to, that they were using. And speaking of the Serapium, that is one giant crazy place. The more you learn about it, the crazier it gets. Just in case you don't know about the Serapium of Saqqara, I'll give you a, a refresher or a brief synopsis. The Serapium of Saqqara was the ancient Egyptian burial place for sacred bulls of the Apis cult at Memphis. It was believed the bulls were incarnations of the god Ptah, which would become immortal after death as Osiris Apis, a name which evolved to... Yusahapi. Yusahapi. What a name to have. I mean, who could have a name better than Yusahapi in the Hellenistic period? It has these vaults with these huge, huge lids on them that weigh about 50 tons. And they, it is a complete mystery how these giant vault-like tombs got inside these dugout rooms. How those huge granite boxes with the lids so big it would take 200 people to move could have been maneuvered inside of those tiny little rooms is beyond me. Inside these little vaults, that looks like they were carved right out of the bedrock. What in the world could they have done that with? And it's very clean, too. Then they somehow squeezed them giant vaults into these tiny rooms. 
According to Brian Forst, when they were discovered in the 19th century, there were humanoids in sight of them. They must have had some kind of tools. It would be difficult to imagine how such a thing could be accomplished with doldrite hammer and a copper chisel. Maybe it's possible. I don't know. It just seems highly unlikely to me. What do you think? This image reminds me of Dracula's lair. <laughs> And it's said that the Egyptians made ornate carvings of just about every creature imaginable. Things like crocodiles and even insects and birds. To look at it, one might not think that the Saqqara bird is anything out of the ordinary. Until it is looked at by an aerodynamics expert. To which they would say that the design is aerodynamically perfect. Is it possible that it's not a bird at all? It doesn't have feathers and has a tail like an airplane. The carving was found in a tomb in Saqqara toward the end of the 19th century. It is said to be about 2200 years old. Some believe it's an out-of-place object due to its tail design. Plus, the thin wings are more reminiscent of an aircraft than a bird. And like I said, there are no feathers. So is it a hawk or is it a glider? The Saqqara bird. And also in Saqqara is the Saqqara disc. Well, you had the Saqqara bird, and now you have the Saqqara disc. It's also called the schist disc. It was found in the 1930s. Most people are struck by the same thought when they first see it, that it's a steering wheel for a car, made 5,000 years before the first car. It also presents the problem that the wheel-shaped disc is much older than the invention of the wheel. The disc is made from a delicate, particular kind of rock, and it only one inch thick. If it was dropped, it would shatter like glass. What was its purpose? Nobody knows. Alternative ideas range from a fancy candlestick holder, but no other holders have been found that even closely resemble the schist disc. Its purpose is no. Now what this gentleman says in this particular video, you'll find linked in the description. He says that the text with the hieroglyphs reads that they had control of a great power and that that great power could be abused. And it was a warning to those who have the ability to control that power. And, of course, the power is electricity. I found that quite interesting. As for the electric question, you know, it really depends on how many coincidences you are willing to accept and not think something of it. Okay, so you got the images at Abydos. All right, that's a coincidence. All right, then you got the gigantic tombs that were said by locals to have one time housed giant humanoid the Serapium in Saqqara. Another coincidence, you got the Great Pyramid, that they would have a very hard time building it even today with machinery. Another coincidence, there's three right there. You have hieroglyphs with them walking around carrying the giant light bulbs. That's a coincidence. See, it's just too many coincidences. That's just what I think. The, I, I'm told that the snake in the middle symbolizes electricity. You have the all of the big skulls from Peru, and there were in Egypt too. I mean, check out this fella. I mean, he's a dandy. I bet he was popular in his time. It really makes one think that something was going on in our deep past that we have no clue of. They had some kind of technology going on. They've left their calling card all over the world. The underground cities, all of the references to electricity. It seems something had to have been going on. And for some reason, it either has something to do with Mars. Cairo just happens to mean Mars. Or the moon, which is strange in itself. 
It's said that Thoth and Adam came from the moon, but it's never been explained any further than just that. What's up with that? What is that supposed to mean? So I found out that the Jed pillar is Jeddah. Sounds similar to Jedi, doesn't it? Which means grandfather or backbone of Osiris or Kundalini. The force, the electric force, is with us. For sure. The whole universe is about being electric. The ancient Egyptians seemed to know this. And from the wonderful video I have linked in the description from Ryan Forrester, he says in it that the texts tell the story, and the texts say that the knowledge of the great energy can be abused. Most archaeologists with mainstream wouldn't dare say such a thing. They're forbidden, or they'll be out of the gravy train loop. But it was actually Benjamin Franklin who discovered electricity. When he flew his historic kite, he was known to have been quoted as saying the sky is electric. Ben was kind of a rock star of his day. He hung out in Paris during the revolution, trying to get France's help in fighting the British. And the French were quite smitten with him. He took to wearing a raccoon skin cap. It became such a fuss, all the Parisians had to have one. So he sent to America for as many coon skin caps that they could make and send there. He was known to be a bit of a partier, he liked to burn at both ends, and it's even said he was a bit of a womanizer. But at least he was an honest scientist. For that, I have to say that I respect and admire old Ben. What do you think to the thought that the ancients in Egypt built all that stuff and the Egyptians just kind of came in and homesteaded on it? I think it's very possible that it's something very unusual and majestic took place all over the world at one time. And the peoples who came in afterward are the ones getting the credit. But it wasn't the ancient Egyptians. It was probably the ancients in Egypt before the Egyptians. Just my guess. What's yours? I'm interested to know. Their hieroglyphics show them working with electricity everywhere. It's beginning to look like another race of beings, humanoids, not human, possibly inhabited ancient Egypt and they were a very intelligent race of beings. Like I have said many times before, at one time on this planet, there were a race of geniuses that were living on the earth. The Jeb Peller, to me, always resembled electricity, coupled with the fact that we've been getting teased by their hieroglyphics since they were carved, or since they were discovered, I guess I should say, that they were up to something with high tech. There's, there's the mainstream Egyptology seems to be completely left-brained on the matter. Even though these people drew images, these magnificent giant light bulbs in their hieroglyphics take it as some kind of symbolism for the lotus flower, was what I heard it symbolizes to them. But really, if you just look at the picture it shows what could be a giant holding these giant light bulbs and they're plugged in they're plugged in to a jeb pillar Now I have to say, when I learned about this next artifact, my mind was blown, but it got double blown. If you didn't know about the Colgant disc, then prepare to have your mind blown. <laughs> because I didn't know this thing existed until just recently, and I'm still 
marveling over it. This is what it is. It is an artifact. Kogan disk is said to be a model of our galaxy. What? And this is where I got my mind blown the first time. How can an ancient artifact be a model of our galaxy? But here's the kicker. It's got a hole right where the sun should be. And whoever put it there knew that the sun is not in the arms of the galaxy, but it's in a spur. If they didn't have telescopes and weren't spacefaring, how could they have possibly known that? Was it just a good guess? No, it's twice. That's double mind blown. How could anyone figure any of this out thousands of years ago? Some ancient artifacts are truly puzzling. Like this one, it blew my mind. It's a mind blower, because I didn't know about it before. 2,000 year old Disco Colgant is an object that was produced for unknown reasons, or at least it seems, so to us, modern humans. Was it an ancient tool, a high tech device, ritual artifact, or does it offer evidence of our ancestors' vast knowledge of astronomy? And, well, you know, I mean, let's just call it what it is. It looks like a model of the Milky Way galaxy. There's even a dot where the sun should be. Isn't that interesting? Who made the disco Colgan and why? It may just be a coincidence, of course, but the disco Colgant makes us easily think this is a graphic representation of the Milky Way, or perhaps some other galaxy. But modern astronomers know the majority of spiral galaxies contain a central bulge surrounded by a flat rotating disk of stars. Not really too much on this thing, but what else could it be? Which, you know, goes right back to the original argument of the super geniuses that were spacefaring. How could they not have been if they're drawn star maps of the galaxy that looks just like the Milky Way? I'm not saying it's that, but that's but it looks like to me. That's it. But, you know, we just throw things in the big mystery bag and never have to deal with them. I mean, what even can be an explanation for a thing like that that's not the obvious? Now, I often like to look up at the moon and muse about what's there, but what about this? If there's one place in this solar system that is as enigmatic or crazy as ancient Egypt, it's the moon. There have been stories of NASA hiding things on the moon. Story of aliens parked on the side of a crater watching the moon landing. There is... Uh, a picture of what looks like a satellite dish on the moon, a cooling tower, buildings. Tell me what you make of this, this little video here. It sure does look like it could be real. Now this brief video is a set of interesting images put together. It looks like a moon beam. Just having a look what's going on in his backyard, I guess. To me, like, it would be hard to fake that. But I'm not saying it's real. It's probably just a really good fake. Apollo 11, that allegedly captured this footage of a moon being undeniably proving life on other planets. But what are the odds? Just like everything, you have to sort the wheat from the chaff. Unfortunately, when it comes to the moon, it's mostly chaff. But there is something freaky about it, isn't there? Oh, and mustn't forget, here is what looks like a TR-3B taking a break on the lunar surface. I can't make this up, folks. It's 400 times smaller than the sun, but 400 times closer. And it completely covers the sun and... An eclipse. I wonder what the odds for that would be. There is also the crazy blue Aristarchus crater. Why does it look geometrically shaped? Why does it look like it has a face? Is that all pareidolia? It's been so long since I used it. 
lest we forget the CP-30 head found on a crater by Apollo 17 astronaut. Now, I don't know what to think of this. I know it comes from Richard Hoagland and Mike Barra, and they do have an agenda, it seems. Is it fraudulent, or is it real? Is this a real robot head? Let me know if you know. The only agenda I'm interested in is the truth. Plus, some guy recently took a picture with just his camera, I think. They got some pretty good ones out there for taking moon shots. Caught a bright spot on the moon resembling a city. Wonder what that is. On the moon. There's another funny story that kind of connects a dot in a way. When Buzz and Neil were doing their thing on the moon in 1969, the Chinese had sent a message through India asking them to look for a Chinese princess. Well, ironically enough, this Apollo 20 trip was allegedly to a, an abandoned spaceship that was crash-landed on the moon. And on board the crash-landed rocket, which is immense, they found a Chinese princess. Coincidence? Again, I don't know. The story is very intriguing. I'm just trying to ascertain if there's any kind of truth to it or if it's just all a bunch of baloney. B.S. You heard about the exploits of the alleged Apollo 20? I've always thought that this was a hoax. But I, I want to know what you think about it. It is interesting, but I still believe it to be a hoax. But then I found out not long ago there really was an Apollo 20 and it was really scrubbed in the 70s. That made me think, hmm, how about that? And it's a very good fake, if that's what it is. Never watched it before. But, you know, I'm sure people can do these kinds of things in studios and why they do them I'll never know. But, you know, because of that we can never really trust our own eyes. But that led me to ask myself a series of questions. Let's just say for example's sake that there was a spaceship crash landed on the surface of the moon and NASA could get to it. Would they tell us? I would say absolutely not because of the Brookings report. Would they bring things back? Absolutely. Would they deny it? Absolutely. They didn't just lie about a few things, they say they lied about everything. So, in the realms of possibility, I would say it's probably 50-50. On the picture where they show what she would have possibly looked like alive, notice the third eye in the center of her forehead. Alright, well that's going to do it for this show. I just wanted to bring up a few more anomalous things that I really enjoy researching. And I thought you might too. Please leave a like, maybe a comment. I do enjoy reading your comments. I'm not monetized whatsoever, so please donate if you can. Everything is 100% free here. If you can. That'll do it for me. Take care. I'll see you soon. Good night. Break it, break it. 